Hi guys, so yesterday I had my thyroid taken out. They actually managed to save half of it. So I had a partial thyroidectomy or a hemithyroidectomy, which I'm really pleased about. The reason I had it done was that I had a big tumour, which was either an adenoma, which is benign, or a carcinoma, which is cancerous. And the cancer risk was quite high, and so they did just want to get it out. And also with the fact that it was so big, they didn't want it to obstruct my airway or anything like that. So we did have to get it taken out. I'll show you some photos of what it looked like before. So it was this big nodule tumour thing. So yeah, we just, we got it taken out. My voice is a bit croaky, as you can hear, and I'm not sure if that's due to the thyroid surgery itself or if it's due to the breathing tube. So when you have this done, they will do blood tests first. So probably in your arm like that, they'll do a blood test and then you will go down to theatre and they'll put in a cannula. And the cannula is so that they can put in fluids, the anaesthetic, pain medication, anti-sickness medication and everything like that. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry my voice is so croaky, but I really wanted to do a video soon after my surgery to show that I'm okay. This only happened yesterday and I'm already back home and I'm talking, my voice is coming back. And so I thought I would talk you through the whole experience. So we got there and they marked up my neck and I filmed a clip about this because I'll show you that clip and you'll see why we were finding that funny. So I'm in my gown and they've marked my neck and everyone keeps laughing that they've marked it because it's so obvious like there's a huge lump and you can't miss it so they keep coming in and being like have they marked it and i show them the marking and they're just like it wasn't really needed was it so yeah i got all marked up then they took my bloods and then was just waiting around i think until i went back to theater they put an iv in and they also put on an oxygen mask as well um, and then you just take a few deep breaths and before you know it, you're out. <laughs> and if they need to put in any additional cannulas or blood tests or anything like that, I think it's just cannulas they put in, they will do that when you're under. So I went to sleep with one cannula in and I woke up with two cannulas, also a drain. So this bandage here is where the drain was. So I'll show you a photo of what that looks like. It is quite graphic. Um, Although looking at this now, you can see the whole thing is a little graphic looking. But my experience was really good. And so I wanted to talk about that because I'll show you the photo and you can see that it, it looks like quite an extreme thing. Like you've got a drain coming out with a drain bottle, which is all the extra blood or fluid, which is so gross. I thought I was going to be squeamish about it, but I was actually fine. And then for me, they use these clips, which are essentially just staples. So coming back to when I woke up, the first thing I noticed when I woke up was that I wasn't in pain and I didn't feel sick and I was so relieved. So I woke up smiling like, oh, this is so good. No pain at all, literally no pain at all. And also I wasn't nauseous either. Having said that, sorry, I need to just rest my arm. <laughs> Having said that, I did talk to the anaesthetist and I told her that I do get sick a lot and I am likely to be sick. And so she added in another antiemetic called cyclozine. And I also asked for the lowest dose possible of pain medication. And she listened to my request, which was really good. And so I woke up, I had minimal pain medications when they were doing it, maximum anti-sickness, and that was a great combo for me. Um, however, because I was under anaesthetic for, it was about an hour or two, maybe an hour and a half, I woke up and I was so shivery. I was shaking the whole bed and they just kept putting blankets on me because I was shivering and shaking so violently. And so I've got this clip where I'm like counting the blankets and there were five in total. That's, that's how much I was shivering. The next hour wasn't... It wasn't really bad, but it wasn't great either. I very soon noticed that my voice had completely gone for the first hour. I was speaking and just nothing was coming out. It was really weird and it was quite annoying as well because I wanted to speak, but I couldn't for about an hour. That being said, 
you can always mime stuff. So don't worry about communication. You can mime to them pain, sickness. If you have needs, you can get that across. I just meant I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to talk to my friends on FaceTime and I couldn't. And the reason I wanted to FaceTime my friends <clears throat> I don't know if I should leave the like coughing and throat clearing in because it's caused a lot of that. Yeah, that first hour I was extremely dizzy and my vision was blacking out for the whole hour. And some things that I asked them to do which helped me was to turn the lights off so that with my vision blacking out, I wasn't noticing it as much because it was darker. Whereas when it was light, it was like bright then blacking out and it wasn't nice. Um, of course, I was lying down in the bed, so I was safe. Even if I were, if even if I were to have fainted, I would have been safe. Um, but I didn't fully faint. I was just my vision was just blacking out for an hour, and that was really unpleasant. But it was only an hour, and actually, I was improving probably from about half an hour in, um, and all of the shivering as well. So I had the blacking out and the shivering for an hour, and that was it. And my recovery was very smooth apart from that um the only thing that did cause me a problem was that the drain when it went in i'll show you a photo it looked really good it was in a really good position um just coming straight out of my neck and then it was fine until around three in the morning when it did start hurting at that point but i could tell exactly what sort of pain it was it felt like Sorry, this bit's a little bit graphic again. It felt like it was being tugged, and so I got the nurses to check it, and they were like, no, it's fine. And then an hour later, I just thought, it doesn't feel fine. So I went and looked and saw that it was um, starting to like tug on my skin, basically. My skin was being pulled, and that's what was hurting. And so I asked if they could retape it, and that helped a lot. So if you do notice any tugging or anything like that, check the drain because it's often a quick fix of just taping that back in. I watched a couple of thyroid surgery vlogs and they said that the drain was the problematic part for them. And even now, actually, this part with the staples doesn't hurt. In the beginning, you're likely to have local anaesthetic in it. So it's going to be, I mean, this was yesterday and I'm able to lightly touch it. So that shows you that it's not really painful. Whereas this plaster or dressing is a little bit painful and I think the reason it hurts is that the skin on your neck is stretchy so that you can stretch your neck back like that um, and the plaster or dressing is just restricting that movement and so you can feel that so this plaster is a little bit painful in terms of my voice I have a sore throat which is exactly like a cold I don't feel like I've had surgery. I just feel like I've got a cold. And that's probably from the intubation tube. So I've, I don't know why that's happened, but like I've had no pain from, didn't have any pain from the actual big incision there. I've never had any pain from it. It's ever so slightly tender. And I assume taking these staples out is going to hurt, but up until now, when they're still in, I've had no pain at the incision site. Doesn't feel like I've had surgery. The drain again was fine, except when it pulled. So just, just keep an eye on that. If you have any pain, check that drain because they might need to retape it. And then, yeah, the sore throat, it's like a cold. It's not, it doesn't feel like you've had surgery. It literally just feels like you've got a cold and it probably sounds a bit like I've got a cold as well. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can say and show. Yeah, there's not much to it really other than the drain and what that looks like. And I had quite a lot of stuff on me. I had cannulas. I had about three cannulas because a couple of them failed. Um, so there were a lot of cannulas. But as I said before, they did do some when I was asleep. So they will do the minimum amount possible when you're awake. So... If you have a fear of needles and you're thinking, oh gosh, two cannulas, you're only going to be awake for the placement of one. Most likely they will only do one and you'll be asleep for the other one. I think that's all of the main things I wanted to say. Another thing, though, that didn't happen to me, but it did happen to one of the girls there that also had this surgery, 
is that they were sick and it might have been the anesthetic but given the timing I think it was because of the painkillers they were given so they most likely didn't have the anti-sickness that I asked for they had the full dose of the original painkillers during the surgery and then while we were on the ward I heard her ask for morphine and I did think when she asked for it I hope she's okay with it uh, she wasn't so my main advice would be um, if you're if you're in pain check that tube because it might be that you just need that drain to be retaped it might not be um, pain that you actually have to put up with and that you need pain medication for and for me I was just so happy to be feeling good in myself in fact when I got back to the ward I felt so great um, after that weird hour that I had a packet of crisps, a banana and half a sandwich which is a really good sign for me to come out of surgery and be well enough to eat that like that that was great and I was really happy with that. Essentials to take with you definitely take some throat sweets because this sore throat you're probably going to need something for it and it's again it's nothing to do with the incisions I think what's happened is you have a breathing tube down your throat and that can cause this on its own I mean we're yet, we're yet to know if this turns out to be that they've nicked a vocal cord or something I'll be disappointed but they don't think they have so I think this sore throat is from the breathing tube and because you've got it on both sides of your neck you've got something inside your throat and then you've got them work on the outside I think there's quite a lot of um, trauma for your throat to go through really so it, it's not surgery pain and I just want to make that clear because before I had this done I was worried about well what, what's an incision going to feel like what's my thyroid going to feel like as in I was expecting pain and actually there's none of that um when I woke up there was no pain at all and as time went on I had a sore throat as in like a cold um so it was nothing that I hadn't felt before so I hope this puts your mind at ease and gives you some some tips about what to do and yeah good luck if you're having this done it really was so much easier than I expected if you asked for that anti-sickness the extra one and if you bring some sore throat sweets with you you will be absolutely fine so thank you so much for watching bye